What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will dive into views in Symfony. Quick pause. Do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. Now that we went over the basics of controllers, it's time to focus on views in Symfony. A view basically represents the template that will be shown to the end user on the screen. Symfony offers a custom templating engine called Twig. Compared to views in PHP, Twig has its own syntax, learning curve and a powerful and intuitive model. There is an interaction between views and controllers because views will be shown based on a method in the controller. At the moment, we're returning a JSON and it's finally time to get rid of it and return a user interface. So let's delete our entire return statement. And let's also clean up our code a little bit since we're not going to pass in a parameter anymore. All right. We also don't need the defaults. So let's delete that as well. And we don't need the method. All right. If you want to show a view to the end user, you need to return the render method, which can be done by returning this render. Right now, you'll see that there is no error on response anymore because we're actually returning something, but there's a new error under the render method. This is happening because we need to return the path of our Twig template. Twig has not been automatically added, so we need to pull it in through Composer. Inside the CLI, let's say Composer, require, Twig. Let's hit enter. What this command have done is creating a templates folder inside the root of our application where you can find a base.html.twig file. This is the location where you need to store your views. Now we're not going to focus on the base.html.twig file because that's something for the next video. But for now, let's create a new file right here. Let's call it index.html.twig. What we can do right here is basically define HTML tags. So let's write down div. You can see that it's actually not working since our extension is the other way around. Usually, .html is the file extension, but at the moment, the ending file extension is .twig. Emmet works based on the file extension, so Visual Studio Code does not know what to do since it's not ending with .html. Now, I have a workaround for it, because we can tell Visual Studio Code that Twig templates needs to be handled like .html files. Inside the top menu, let's click on Code, Preferences, and Settings. Now let's search for settings right here. Now right here, you can see an option where you can edit in settings.json. So let's do that. What we need to do right here is defining a new line of code. So just follow along. It doesn't really matter where. So let's say right here, let's add double quotes. Let's say Emmet dot include languages. After our double quotes, we're going to add a colon space set of records. And what we're going to say is that in double quotes, Twig needs to be handled as HTML files. Now we still have an error right here because we need to close it off with a comma. If we save it and navigate back to our index.html file, remove the div, write down div again, hit tab. You'll see that it works right now and we're ready to continue on with this video. What we can do is to remove our div, write down h1 and hit tab. And inside our h1, Let's just print out a text of welcome to this symphony course. Save it. Now we do need to define the view inside the controller. So let's open our movies controller and right inside of the render method, add single quotes and define the path of our view. Now by default, the render method knows that it needs to look inside the templates folder. So what we need to do is to say, well, find me the index.html.twig file. Now we're almost done because we still have our parameter. Let's delete it. Let's navigate back to Brave, refresh the page. And as you could see, welcome to the Symphony course has been printed out. Now the render method inside the controller accepts another parameter, which is optional. What you eventually want to do is to get values from your database inside the controller and pass it through to the view. Now to do this, we need to add a comma right after our first parameter, so the index.html.twig, and then we're going to add a set of brackets right here, since we're going to pass in an array straight to the view. In here, we're going to pass in an index value pair, 
Now the index will be in single quotes title and the value will be Avengers Endgame. Now it won't be visible in the view right now because we're not doing anything with it. So what we can do is to open our index.html.twig. Let's remove our welcome to the symphony course and we need to somehow echo out data inside our twig. Now in plain PHP, you would probably do something like this. Variable name and close it off. Now in Twig, it's a little bit different. Let's delete it. And whenever you want to print out variables, you need to wrap it around a double set of curly braces. Then inside the curly braces, you can just write down the index name that you passed in. With PHP, you have to put a dollar sign in front of it to tell the application that it's a variable. But Symfony does understand that we're dealing with a variable. So what we can do is to say, well, we have a title right here. Let's save it. Let's navigate back to Brave. Refresh it. And as you can see, Avengers Endgame has been printed out. Another cool thing that I have to mention is that you can add a dump inside a Twig template, which is a method. So what we can do is to delete title, write down dump, parentheses, because it's a method. Then inside the method, we can print out the title. Save it, navigate back to Brave. And as you can see, the dump method is a function that will provide a bit more information about the template variable. And we will be using this quite a lot to debug our template. As you can see, it's a string with 17 characters with a value of Avengers Endgame. Now let's focus on conditional statement inside a Twig template for a moment. A conditional statement is basically an if, else, and else if statement. It's comparable to the statement of PHP, but you write it a little bit different. Let's remove this piece of code that we have and also our h1. Whenever you want to execute a block of code, you need to put it in between an opening curly brace, followed with a percentage sign. Now the same thing needs to happen when you want to close it. So space, percentage sign. Inside this block, we can basically define the if statement. Now the if statement has an expression, which in our case will be title. So we're basically going to see if title has been set or not. Now right below our if statement, we could simply do anything we want if the condition is true. So what I want is to hit a tab, create a paragraph and say, title is a movie. Now this will only print out a block if the title has been set. So let's also create a paragraph if the title is empty. This can be done in the same exact way, but in an else statement. So let's go on the line below. Let's add curly braces, percentage sign, space, else, and let's close it off as well. What we're going to print out is a new paragraph with whoops, no title has been set. Now keep in mind that this won't work. If we save it and navigate to Brave, refresh it, you'll see that we're getting an unexpected end of template. That's happening because you need to close off your if statement. Right after our else statement, we're kind of done, right? So we need to add another block. So right here, let's say another block. Then right here, we need to define the end if statement. Save it, navigate to Brave, refresh it, and right here. Avengers Endgame is a movie has been printed out because our title has been set. Now let's open our movies controller. Let's remove the value of Avengers Endgame, save it, navigate back to Brave, refresh it, and as you can see, whoops, no title has been set, has been printed out, because our title is empty. That being said, this was it for this video where I showed you how you could interact from your controller to your view. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.